Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you guys for making it to the finale of The Masked Singer because you are the first trio to do so. You did something that another family band, Hanson, uh, could not. They were the first trio to ever go on The Masked Singer. Love I was them. Really them. Yeah. Love them, as, love them as well. There's nothing like family harmonies, which obviously was your trademark on the show. Thank you. So um, as as you know, some people don't know, yes, you, you do perform, but a big kind of story arc you perform regularly, but the big story arc on The Masked Singer, when people were sort of trying to figure out your clues, and for the record, I figured out who you guys were the minute you started bleeding, so to speak. But, <laughs> but when when you, a, a big part of the story arc was the fact that, you know, you have taken long hiatuses, that, you know, you talked to Cardi about the show, about how you always had this dream that one day you'd be back together on stage. And maybe there are some people that, you know, aren't aware that you, you know, of the reunions you've had over the years. So like you kind of reintroduced yourself to a lot of people as the lambs. And I'm just curious why, why you would want to go on this show and sort of do that. Well, when the mass singer asked you to be on their show, you do not turn that down. I mean, it's such, <laughs> it's such an honor. Although I did as a solo artist That's and cool. I turned it down a couple of times, but I knew it didn't feel right. And I felt like, I felt insecure, truthfully. Oh. Um, yeah, oh, I felt insecure. It shouldn't be. Um, I feel like whole and at home and right when we're all three together. Mm -hmm. I feel there's a great power in the the one voice that the three voices creates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very meaningful. So I'm so glad that we that we decided to do it. Um, it's also something that we, you know, it's out of the comfort zone for us. We've never done anything like it. So we thought, why not push ourselves, you know, do something mm -hmm. original. But so many people knew it was you. I mean, if you Googled Wilson Phillips anytime in the last few weeks, like Mass Singer came up. I mean, was it hard to keep the secret? Or I mean, were you just going around your daily lives and people being like, hey, lambs? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was torture. Let's put it that way. <laughs> It is hard because you don't want to slip your tongue, you know, when you <laughs> and, and when people are like really forward, they kind of know they shouldn't ask you because they, you, they know it's a secret, you know, right. that's mm -hmm. the whole point of the show. And it puts you in a yeah. position when people talk to you. So it's like, you have to constantly dodge, like, how am I going to answer this without being suspicious? Right. And it's usually just like quickly changing the subject. Oh, got to go. Sorry. My, you know, someone's on the other line, <laughs> right. you know, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> So why don't you clarify for me, like, I know, you know, like I said, on the show, it talked a lot about you taking breaks and, and um, how long was the longest break you had um, when you guys, I guess you guys never broke up and obviously your sisters, but you know, uh, how long was like the longest hiatus for Wilson Phillips where you didn't do anything, didn't record, did not perform. And what was it that got the ball rolling again after that? I think it was 10 years and it was in the early 2000s when we had kind of disbanded um, and went our separate ways. No, it was earlier than that. Was it? Way earlier. Oh, was I it think the 90s? I think you're a decade oh, behind. Oh, oh, oh. I think I am. You're a decade behind. Okay, sorry. It was 1992. Oh, she's right. Oh, yeah. wow. 1992. And then, uh, uh, yeah, about 14 years, actually. Okay, nineteen ninety-two. I, I, I am way off. Sorry, uh, that's she has four children. She, her, Sorry. she's a busy woman. Yeah, my mind. I get is, it. You know, but you know, we, we never lost hope. Like we just, we just never yeah, lost yeah. hope. We, <sighs> yeah, we always knew that we would at some point rejoin and and you know marry again. But it was like um, we we did you know some cover records and a Christmas album. But this was this was like the biggest public i mean bridesmaids was really cool yeah and you know yeah. it, but it was a movie and it was at the end of the movie and you, you know you, you could miss it but it, although i thought it was a really great part of the movie oh absolutely you know, so so wonderful but this was really like a big just a big explosion for us um visually and in such a different way mm -hmm. a really interesting way to kind of come back yeah I think. yeah absolutely and the yeah. lambs were so cute best costumes ever oh, so adorable so i want to go back to 92 or to 90 actually to the beginning really because you know i think maybe some people if they weren't old enough to remember if they've just forgotten may uh and i'm old enough to remember by the way uh i think they like may it. have Thank you. I have a ring. <laughs> I have a ring light on. It helps. Uh, but thank you. But I, yeah, I remember how big. I mean, it wasn't just hold on. There were like four top ten singles from that album. Five, five hit singles. Four in the top ten. Sold like something like 
10 million copies. It was at the time the biggest album by an all female group at the time it set a record for that. I think sometimes people tend to forget that. And I just kind of want to go back to it because it seems like it was quite overnight. Obviously, you guys have known each other for a while. It wasn't overnight, but it was it felt was it a too much too soon thing? Because like within two years of all that, this hiatus, this 10 year hiatus you're talking about happened. And it was it was just it must have been such a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. I mean, things were coming at us at a million miles an hour. Yeah, we were in our early 20s and it was a lot, you know, emotionally and you know, we, we were touring constantly for two years. So it was, you know, it's just, you, you have to kind of like reflect on it afterward because at the time you're just in it and you have to keep going, going, going. And, you know, it's, it's a group, it's three people mm -hmm. and, and not everybody was on the same page in 1992, That's you know, right. mm -hmm. and it, it's like, we, it took a long time for me to get over. I was so angry. I didn't understand why, you know, one person wants to go and do their own thing when we're on top. Mm -hmm. It was hard for me. And it took a long time for me to be patient and realize that everybody has their own, we are our own people with our own goals and we have to respect each other. And it's, it's taken a long time. And, and I mean, I'm 54 years old. I've learned a lot in the last 30 years mm -hmm. and, and controlling people and making somebody do something is not going to happen. Are you referring to, I mean, I know she's not here, unfortunately, uh, but to, to China going off to do the solo record or. I mean, I think that it was sort of like, it, it was a collective thing because we were really tired and we were also like mad at the record company at the time, because they said like, they painted it out. Like our second album was a failure, but we had still so sold almost 4 million records. And to me, that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So we, we were, I think we just, China wanted to go do other stuff, but we also were like, Oh no, we, it, it, the thought of like breaking up, it was, it was a break, but the thought of it was like scary and like, it didn't feel right. Right. But at the same time we were, we were tired and Wendy and I went straight off to make a record. We made Hey Santa yeah. Yeah. right after. And it was like, we were like, well, we're not going to stop. Let's keep going. Yeah. Let's keep going. Well, I want to talk Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Wendy. I'm no, sorry. I was just going to say that I think everything has a reason, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that the fact that Carney and I went off, we ventured off and made something that we're very proud of um, was meant to be. And right. we're happy about it. So, well, I absolutely, you should be proud of that, but you should also be proud of Shadows and Light. And I want to, I'm glad you brought that Thank up. I want to talk about that album because it's actually the 30th anniversary of that album is this year. 90, it was 92, right? You broke up yeah. Yeah. shortly after that. And, uh, I just want to talk about sort of, you know, how it's been portrayed as, as you said, quote, unquote, a failure or a flop, which is, I think happens, like it happens to Hootie and the Blowfish. It happens to Alanis Morris. It happens to like anyone who has one record that's that big. It's kind of hard to have, if you sold 13 million copies of one album, right. chances are you're not going to sell 13 million of the second, the next one. Probably um, not. So, mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I'm curious because um, I think a lot of people don't realize that Hold On was actually like based on something kind of serious because it was such a like sunny and you know anthemic song but you know my understanding from what I recall of Shadows and Light is that it delved maybe more overtly into like dark stuff heavy stuff like stuff about your father stuff about like child abuse things like that and like I'm just wondering if you have any theories where there or any memories of anyone being like this is not what we want from Wilson Phillips we don't want dark shit we don't want you know heavy subjects we want another like happy song singing on the beach, you know, like, did, can you talk a little bit about that? You know, I, that is an interesting um, perspective on shadows and light, because I've never heard anyone say that. Yeah. And you may be onto something because you're right. We were always like the positivity people, you know, and I think people got a, a lot of inspiration from our words and our lyrics. So um, yeah, we went in a darker place and we delved into things that were kind of uncomfortable in the second record. So maybe it was kind of just too much for people. Also, I think that, um, you know, with the, the first single on the second album, which was You Won't See Me Cry, that actually is a song about strength and inner strength. So even though it, I think people can get, I don't want to say confused. Mm -hmm. I think that music evokes emotion and it it it's a it's a um what's the word pro, pro, it's provocative it's yeah. it's you know it's a catalyst uh for your your heart and your emotions right. to sort of explode yeah. and i sometimes equate 
beautiful harmony, beautiful melodies, a beautiful song, almost with a melancholy feeling. If something's really beautiful, mm -hmm. I, I automatically, like when I hear a piano play, it can hit a part of me that that is sensitive. So mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Some people might hear it and go, oh, that's sunny and lovely. And I go, well, that sounds pretty. So it makes me feel like sad. It makes yeah. no sense. But so with You Won't See Me Cry, we, we, we wanted the first single to be Give It Up, but the record company wanted it to be You Won't See Me Cry. And it was like, we didn't know, like, if we start off with a ballad, is this going to set the tone for right. the record? Yeah. But really, if you listen to the lyrics, it's about not taking any shit anymore. Right. And you're not going to walk all over me and you're yeah. not going to see me be weak. So right. it's interesting. You so, know? Yeah, it comes from female empowerment and strength, yeah. actually. Yeah. Awesome. But well, we appreciate the 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 light you're shedding, no pun intended, on Shadow of <laughs> Because I love that record, too. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the light you're shedding when, Carney, you were talking about sort of things, the kind of juxtaposition of things seeming like sunny and happy, but also being like sad. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of what like your father does at his best is like the best Beach Boys songs, Pet Sound songs and stuff. Are... I would agree with that. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I would agree with that. Thank you. So I'm actually curious. I have a, I have all sorts of theories about Shadows of Light, but I actually think that album and and your work in general that you did in the early '90s kind of foreshadow what was going to be happening in the '90s with, for lack of a less lame term, women in rock. I mean, I don't think a lot of people, for I think people forget that Glenn Ballard worked on all that stuff with you, and what happened like a, what do you do with Alana, who I just mentioned, oh. like you know, three years later, four years later, something like that. Exactly. Do you do you feel like you opened any, I mean, given how huge that record was, just at the dawn of the 90s, Nirvana and stuff was happening, but like what you guys were doing was happening. Do you feel like you opened any doors in that way? Hmm. I do. I, I mean, I I would I would hope so. <laughs> but uh I do. do I think, think well, I mean, stylistically, I think there was a lot of people kind of jumping on that bandwagon. There was that that kind of pop sweet female sound expose mm. did it i mean it was, it was kind of a lot the bangles the gogos even though they were a little bit before us i feel like we were kind of like all riding on that same train but just on different little cabooses you know but um i think that still to this day i think the reason why wilson phillips is is successful has been successful is because of the sound of our of our sound mm -hmm. I, I just yeah I, I think it always comes back to that because even watching robin thick on the mass singer when he would say oh you're singing your harmonies he pointed to his heart and he said it hit my heart you know yeah. and that's what i mean about when people sing together like fleetwood mac that was one of our biggest influences and christine passing away mm -hmm. yesterday was like so fucking sad i know just you know so sad for us but but right. it's like i think about like their sound and yeah. you know and yeah. all those songs are great and they yeah. all wrote great stuff but it's that sound you yeah. know yeah the you know, the entity of three, three voices coming together and what that energy is. I yeah. think that's yeah. what, that's what helped us, you know, be popular, but it's also that we were authentic to who we were. Yeah. And we mm -hmm. didn't try to be anybody else. Right. I think. Good I point. actually wanted to ask you about Christine McVie, if you, because I, I imagine you crossed paths with her a lot. I mean, your uncle dated her for about three years or something. And obviously, you know, California scene, like, do you, do you have any memories of, did you spend time with her as kids or anything like that? Um, no. I, I have a memory. No. Okay. I, I I do. I w went to her house one day. Dennis was with her. She had this beautiful living room with all these Tiffany lamps. And she was very sweet. And I remember she had this beautiful rolling backyard. And um, and I remember Uncle Dennis. Oh, she said that Uncle Dennis um, for Valentine's Day, like lined up like 5,000 roses and a big heart on that lawn that we were sitting on outside of her house. Right. And yeah. And, I and I was, I was hoping that Stevie was going to pop by. Cause I'm also a big Stevie fan. Oh my God. But I do yeah. remember she was very gentle. She had a very gentle spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the greatest songwriters ever. Um, absolutely. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm in shock. I just, I don't want it to be true. I yeah. Know. Yeah. That was a, absolutely, absolutely a hard day. Well, you obviously, grew up, you know, and China as well, grew up in the California rock scene and grew up in in music. So I'm curious, because I've talked to a lot of second generation musicians, everyone from like, you know, Danny Harrison to Louise Goffin, Gene Simmons' daughter, uh, Alexa Ray Joel, the list goes, I've, and not all of them have success. Some of them do, most of them don't have success on the level that Wilson Phillips did. And a lot of them, you know, 
have said, like for all the, uh, you know, all the things that having famous parents or successful parents for all the doors it can open, it could also shut some doors because there's accusations of nepotism or not paying your dues or whatever. So like, what were your, when you were navigating that with all of the pedigree that both you guys in China had going into it, like, and also the name was Wilson Phillips. It was right out there. Did you struggle with any of, of that sort of backlash or anything like that yeah, back well, we in the couldn't, day? We couldn't think of a name. So we just said, <laughs> fuck it, let's just go with Wilson yeah, Phillips. It was just easy. That, that was that. Um, <laughs> yes, of course we did. I mean, there were a lot of people who said, you know, you, you're riding on the coattails of your parents, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but, and it made us feel like we had to prove ourselves even more so. But, um, you know, I think what- No, was I was gonna say the, the advice of Richard Perry, our first producer, he said, and he produced some great out records like Stony End, um, you know, Barbara Streisand, The Pointer Sisters, Carly Simon. I mean, this right. man was very successful. Very. He remember what he said to us? You have to write your own songs. That's what he said. Mm. Yeah, he, he introduced us. He goes, I know the man. And he's the one who introduced us to Glenn Ballard, who we co-wrote our records with except release me that was the only song we ever wrote the three of us yep. together right. but i mean so that was one of the ways we thought all right we're not you know bull crapping around here bull crapping okay <laughs> um, you know, we're not we we are we are true artists you know we write we sing we sing live we've never had a damn tape played in the background we've never right. you know i mean unless it's like the parade or something where they make everybody lip sync we sing live so mm -hmm. it was important for us to to prove ourselves you well, know so we had no instruments so we of course our voices had to be right if we couldn't sing live then what were we doing on stage right <laughs> but recently i thought you know i think i want to start playing um release me on on the piano when we do a concert i thought that'd be really fun Ooh. to like go around the piano yeah, like and that. and me play this that's how we wrote it you know what i mean yeah. like that's yeah. so you're saying this 33 years later yeah i guess i am <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're off onto a new onto a new start. I am curious though, since you do write your own songs and stuff, why with your first recording in about a decade that you chose to do my man Harry Styles boyfriend love love Harry Styles. So I'm oh. curious, but I'm curious why you chose to sort of make a comeback, you know, with a cover. We, yeah, we adore him. I mean, we love him. Yeah. I think he's phenomenal. It was just I admired him for everything, everything you know, his style, his I mean, the way he sings is so beautiful. Oh, my God. He's a great singer. Yeah. And I love his we love his records. Yeah. This song was probably I don't know, maybe who knows, maybe maybe we influenced him with this song. You never know. It sounds like that's wait, bold. That that's was a little bold. No, but he, he loves Stevie Nicks. <laughs> I don't know. He loves you Stevie Nicks. He yeah. loves that sound. Right. Oh, okay. It's so not like, a huge stretch to be honest. Right. Maybe, maybe okay. it's not, you know, I think I want it to be true, but I can uh -huh. say this. I, I think that it was the perfect, perfect song for us to do. It just sound, it sounded like us. Yeah. And it was like instant. We had to do it. Yeah. Because it had the three part harmony all the way through. And that was mm -hmm. just very reminiscent of release me, you know, and it just, it just felt right. It felt right. Speaking of your, your three part harmony, I, 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 it's interesting when I, you know, I get, when I do the mass singer stuff, I get very into the clues I'm Googling I'm Wikipedia and I'm very into it. So like, I remember when you had the clue about how you'd sung with Paul McCartney, you know, I immediately went to Google. I'm like, is Wolf Phillips ever? And I saw that you were on four or five seconds, the Rihanna, Paul McCartney, Kanye West song. And uh, I just got to ask with everything going on with Kanye West, right? Did you work with him or were you in the studio with him? <laughs> yes. What was that it, like? It was one of the funniest sessions we've ever done. Uh, Tell me not, about it. not, It's not Kanye, but it was the, the entire scene going on. Oh, my God. Oh. First first of all, he, he, he told us that... Um, his mom had passed away just probably six months before that. And he was very in, she was still grieving. Yes. And so I, I brought him banana bread and he told me that it reminded him of his mom Aww. and it was very sweet. He was so complimentary of us. He, so I love your sound. He said, he said, y'all sing like angels. Aww. And that's what he, that's what he said. And that, that really meant a lot to us. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's been a lot of shit going on with it and we really kind of stay out of that stuff, but. Um, I can say that he was so animated in the studio and he had six different sessions going on at once. He's extremely creative. And we knew that Rihanna was going to not going to be there. She likes to, she likes to record at like 2 AM 
That's her mm-hmm. schedule. Right. She goes in at like noon and finishes at six. It's it's, it's different. Um, and we're with children sleeping by then. So, you know, right. <laughs> we went in and it was like, there was, there were all these, there was so much pot. Jesus Christ. You couldn't a, even see the room was so smoky. It was so smoky. And, and, you know, here, here we are, uh, I'm sober and I'm like almost getting a contact high. It was really <laughs> intense, but we sang and sang and sang. Yeah. But the ironic part was that we, we knew that Paul McCartney was going to be on that record. We were very excited to be somewhat of a part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. But we wound up, the classic is we wound up on one word. <laughs> yeah. One word in the bridge. One word. We sang the whole thing and I mean, it was, it was comical. It was, but. Oh, you know, no. Hey, I'm honored. We're on the right. song. You know, the one she goes, <laughs> wondering where I've been, where I've been. We go, been, you know, we do the harmony, been. That's it. The the yeah. word been. Yeah. But you know what? Hey, <laughs> Woo-hoo! I'm, I think it's great. I feel <laughs> like there's got to be a way to release the Wilson Phillips version of it. Like with, like the outtake or, you know, okay. just her version. Ha- she has it. I recorded it in the playback in the studio but i never can release it because it's not it's not releasable right you have the yeah bootleg. i have the bootleg <laughs> of us doing the whole thing and it sounds like choiry and it's a cool version yeah that would have been you a cool know. song maybe to do on the mass singer you could have maybe you never done know it that way yeah yes. if you ever come back on like a reunion show or a special or whatever i do want to ask a little bit more about shadows and light because you know since it came up i think it's really interesting how you know it wasn't like a 180 or whatever but it was a little bit of a departure from the first record in terms of the subject matter if you choosing to kind of it like i said in a more like overt way sing about like what like i said with hold on it was about to be heavy but it was like more vague about what you were singing about but like it was a little more overt with shadows and light what made you guys want to go there you know singing about personal stuff and what well, I think that, you know, we were, we were very young. When we first started Wilson Phillips. We were 16, 18 years old, sitting around the the floor harmonizing. And we were barely out of high school. Wendy was still in high school. Oh, and wow. We, and we yeah, almost, we almost, um, it was almost like therapy for us. We actually had started therapy. So mm. just growing up in the house of, of Brian Wilson, John Phillips, Michelle, it was, it was not a normal or easy childhood. Um, there were people think like, oh, you were just given things. And yeah, we lived in a big house and then, you know, had money and there were all these celebrities coming over, but it didn't, it didn't um, substitute the lack of fatherhood, the the lack of a family unit that was real solid and strong. Mm-hmm. And it created so much insecurity in our lives. Yeah. And there were yeah. a lot of things that happened that were really scary and not great. Mm-hmm. And we sort of faced it when we got into therapy. And that's what we wrote about on the second record. And I think the subject matter was heavy in places, but that's how people, it, it was cathartic. Mm-hmm. It was necessary for our personal growth. And I think that at that age, it was pretty mature that we would delve into that and, mm-hmm. and actually like look at our stuff, you know, and, yeah. and, and face it and, and move through it. Move through it. Yes. So. Is and that, that's, what, yeah, that's so, what music does. Music yeah. can heal. Is that something that, you know, when we're talking about the bond that, you know, you guys have with China that, you know, you, that keeps bringing you guys back together and there's nothing like the three of you together. Is that something that sort of, is that the core of your bond that you, you know, you, you guys have been through things with your, your parents and your upbringing that most, very few people could really relate to, you know, I mean, it's a very unique, exp- you guys had very unique childhoods. Is that something that kind of has bonded you? Well, I just want to say that I think there are millions of people, millions of people that grow up in a dysfunctional home where there's drug abuse and there's parents that are not on top of their shit and not aware of what's going on. If you look at the mental health right now, the state of people, it is, that's a, that's a prime example Mm -hmm. of how, how parenting, it is all about the parents. Mm -hmm. And as us being parents, I mean, yes, we, we all talk about what we've been through the three of us, Mm -hmm. but I mean, nothing comes before our children. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately in the sixties and the seventies, people were doing drugs. They were experimenting, you know, it's a different time now, but, but things are so, um, people are so dying to be able to express themselves and be, be themselves fully and completely. Um, and now we have the freedom to do that without being squashed, mm. you know? And, and I think so that, true. I just think it's, I don't know. I, I kind of went off on a tangent there, no. but <laughs> good, good, you know. it's good. It's good. 
Well, because, yeah, back, I mean, now people talk about mental health a lot. You know, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, Prince William, and Harry, they'll talk about therapy and, and trauma and, and mental health issues and stuff. But, like, in 91, 92, 90, that wasn't really, I mean, maybe people were expressing angst in their music. People were, weren't really talking about how they were in therapy or anything like that. I don't actually recall at the time when Wilson Phillips first exploded onto the scene. Did you guys talk about this sort of thing like was it asked in interviews or you know about your upbringing about therapy about your parents anything like that i mean during shadows and light and the promotion of it yes of course they they talked about it and asked us about our issues and what the songs really meant so yeah we talked about it a bit and we weren't ashamed of the fact that we were in therapy i mean but it's also not, it's not uh, a bad thing also in the beginning they were always like you come what was it like growing up with what was it like growing up with yeah. that was always like the question yeah. you know so it's yeah. like it didn't even matter like we no matter what happened every interview how can you get around the our our, our heritage our 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 lineage you know mm-hmm. you were never ever it's always going to be a part of our story because their yeah. music their genes are part of us yes. and it's something to be proud of. And, you know, n- nobody's a perfect parent. Right. Um, nobody is a perfect anything. And right. um, I think that, I don't know, I'm just so proud. I'm so proud of, of us. We've been through a lot. And yeah. um, I just hope that people just know that how appreciative we are, how freaking appreciative we are for the years of the commitment of listening. Yeah. I mean, it's so going to be 33 years. The loyalty and, you know, of our fans. Have you, yes. have you found that Shadows and Light has, you know, found more of an audience, like uh, for lack of a better word, like a cult audience, you know, uh, since, you know, in the last 30 years, have people, you know, rediscovered it and ever say anything to you about any of the songs on it? Um, connecting with them resonating with them helping them anything like that go ahead um the song um uh flesh and blood yeah. about our father that we wrote oh, i we, we we did that live one time a concert and I, a few times and it was it was hard to sing yeah that it was a whopper it's a um, heavy. and it and it hit, it hit people in in big ways you know there's there's always people that come to the shows and you talk to them after and they say well you know, this song on yeah. Shadows and Light, yeah. some obscure song was their favorite song. Right. And it's kind of surprising, but right. it's great to know that you're touching people because they can relate to your story. You know, it, I mean, it, even it like, them. even like Goodbye Carmen, it was written yeah. about a housekeeper. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, people were like, I love Goodbye Carmen and I love Goodbye Carmen too, especially the ending, right. you know, so there's, there's a lot of, and, and also it, it was a ton, that album also gave us sort of a platform to really write on our own. So mm-hmm. we all composed like our own song, which was, which we really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that was cool too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I mean, people, I think because of Bridesmaids, I think people really harp on hold on and it mm-hmm. is so, it is such an inspirational song, but I'm glad that you pointed out that it wasn't just one hit. You know, I mean, I think that's why we sold that many records, mm-hmm. you know, because we had a collection of songs that a lot of people could identify with in different yeah. ways. Yeah. I do want to ask about Hold On Bridesmaids, but one last question about Shadows and Light is, did <laughs> given that it was such a, a personal record and a darker record and, you know, you did all the writing and stuff, when it was, you know, perhaps not correctly described as a failure or flop because it failed to have the same sales as your debut album, like, that must have been hard for you guys to sort of are you know and already being so young and sort of being characterized as a like being past you know has-beens or what I don't you know I'm trying to say like the industry can be so mean the way they characterize things you gotta have thick skin yeah and you just say fuck it that's somebody (laughs) that's somebody's view you know like yeah honestly we were proud of it no matter what happened oh yeah that's all that we cared about and if it was going to be successful, great. If, you know, if it wasn't as successful, we were okay with that too, because we were confident. And also if the goal is just to sell records, yeah. I don't know how true of an artist you are. That's I mean, true. We, we, That's true. We love everything we do and we put our heart and soul into it. If yeah. it's embraced, great. Uh-huh. We have to get it out. Yeah. It's, it's expression, you know, it's artistry. That's true. So, um, you know, I mean, people like you that really want to talk about Shadows and Light, I, I think you like that album. And that means that we made an impact on you that mm-hmm. way. So you're one of the people out there 
joined by by a lot of people probably that that holds a special place in their heart too so just hearing you do this interview and talking about that has made my day i can tell you that oh that's yeah, so awesome well, you you sorry go ahead wendy i was gonna say and i i can tell that you really do your homework and you <laughs> you research a lot so yeah thank you thank you guys i've been told you've made my day too i've been told that i need to wrap it up unfortunately but to look to the future you did the harry Styles song but, you know, now that you have maybe been introduced or reintroduced to the audience via The Masked Singer and, and uh, you know, is there new music coming, new original music coming? What's next? We hope so. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I think it might be lighting a little fire here. Yeah. Um, There's plenty of material to write about. If the universe, you know, provides that for us, right. we will go for it, you know, and we're ready. To, I, I feel that created. I feel it too. It won't be young you love. It'll be old love, but that's, <laughs> you know, we'll see what happens. But from your mouth to God's ears. Uh -huh. Awesome. It'll be, about, it'll be about marriage and kids. Marriage and time. kids. <laughs> Great subjects. Well, well, awesome. I've really enjoyed speaking with you. I need to let you go, but congratulations Thank on you. your mass singer run and you guys have a wonderful day. Yay. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Nice Bye. Bye.